joining so currently in uh, the north york mars uh, i'm just doing a bit of a bit of a shoot with a prime lens of all things and i'm not having very much success i thought i'd do a little video on practical tips and advice that i wish i'd had known when i first started this beautiful craft and the first one uh, arguably is the most current one and that is summer is absolutely atrocious and it's the most difficult season to be out doing photography if you're thinking of hanging up your boots don't do just yet because autumn's on the way and that is a hell of a lot better um, most of us struggle in this in this season uh harsh light drought um just everything about it really is uh is, is one of them you know you can look at it in any way you know challenging means that it's going to be a, a good thing which arguably it is but autumn is much better and it's on its way so that's my first tip <laughs> The next one, um, arguably is also very, very important, is being present. Now, I read a book, as you've probably heard before, Eckhart Tolle's Para Now, and he says that you should realise deeply that all you ever have is the present moment. Um, but in photography, you must be present, and you must be in the moment, uh, because if you're not, and you're worrying about your phone, and you're worrying about well, whatever's going on, you're not paying attention to your environment and your environment is where you should be, especially when you're out with your camera. So, not rocket science, but very, very important. So when you get to a location, stop, sit down, put your bag down, cool down, clear your mind, and then, um, and then you should be about ready to get them photos snapped. So I just got around the corner and I've just uh, walked into a quite a nice pretty little scene. So we've got a swan just on the water and uh, we grabbed a snap, I'll put it on the screen for you now. Um, but the uh, next thing is, make sure your equipment is accessible at all times. Now if you're, uh, if you're constantly rifling through your bag and fighting with your, uh, fighting with your stuff to, to get to it, it's not good and the thing is it makes it so you don't want to be out there so make sure your camera is somewhere really easy to get to because if it's not you won't be taking that shot and um, the whole point of being out is to take shots when you're doing photography so it kind of makes sense that one really uh, you don't have to spend loads of money 18 quid this clip i'll leave it in the description bish bash bosh yeah that was quite a nice photo of that so I'm um, out with the uh, Nikon Z 8 um, to 5 millimeter 1.8 lens, uh, and the reason for that is I'm not used to the focal length, and I'd like to get used to it and see if it's any good for landscape photography. Uh, but at the same time, when you know your focal length, when you do come to use it for portraits, in this case. It's going to be uh, it's going to be really handy because I'll have ounces and ounces of experience with this lens. Now, because it's a 1.8 and 
it's a telephoto range um, I like to use well I've just tried to add a bit of bokeh in that photo and I thought it was pretty nice um, yeah fantastic yeah so I suppose that's another bonus tip there um, challenge yourself mix it up a bit restrict yourself uh, in this case I'm out with an 85 millimeter it's a focal length that I'm not used to so I'm out and about with just that uh, that just makes for an interesting day and obviously I'm learning as I'm going so fantastic another thing so ISO is a big one I think so my favourite number used to be 64 and it's to keep it down as low as possible and even hit them low numbers and try and stay as low as possible because I thought that's what you should do but ISO is there for a reason and it's there to help you get the shot that you need in the correct light so you don't want your shutter speed to be going lower than 125 and then if you're zooming in even higher um, so you don't want them shutter speeds to be sort of hitting them low points and to compensate for that you use your ISO it's there for a reason it's there to help you so don't be afraid to knock it up you know 6400 perfect it depends on your camera really um, but don't be afraid to be using it because it's a tool that's in your camera and it helps you get that shot that you need it's just fantastic here so I'm just at Egdon Bridge I'm um, along the River Esk and I'm just having a little scout really just seeing if I can pick off little scenes I'm being too noisy for wildlife so we're not going to get any of that at this present moment but uh, yeah beautiful um, which is going to bring me on to my next one because I'm next to water So the next one, and it's one that I'm very, very guilty of. Um, it sort of ties into the last one that I've just said uh, regarding ISO. Now, if you've got a tripod on you and you're at a shot and it's on your back, where, where is it? There she is. Bloody use it. So I was out on a shoot for, for a sunset the other day and I had a really, really good shot. And I just could not be bothered to get the tripod out and anyway I got home and the images were a little bit noisy um, it's there for a reason you know your tripod is absolutely uh, perfect it stabilizes your camera it means that you can get that shutter speed right down and if you're in low light conditions you know it's a no-brainer that is going to allow you to get a sh crisp sharp image so if you're on scene and you've got a tripod don't do what I do and that's not use it because why have you got it on you uh, it takes two minutes the photo itself is going to be there forever well that's debatable if you've got bad saving um, situation and you're not backing up your stuff it might not be there forever but that's another tip make sure you back everything up um, yeah so you're going to be uh, you're going to be on the scene once and that opportunity is there once so if you can get a sharp image with a tripod get it on it means you can lower that ISO, it means you, it, it means you can lower that shutter speed and um, yeah, don't really know any more to say on it. Don't be lazy like me and uh, get your tripod out. quick tip bonus one make sure you've got a polarizer and an ND filter I like to use a variable ND filter because I'm a lazy bugger and if I have to keep screwing them on and off I won't be screwing them on and off I'll just leave what's on the end of the lens and uh, yeah so ND filter and polarizer <sighs> so I thought now would be a good time to talk about weight it really matters so um, you often want to bring your best lenses out with you um, so I've just bought a uh, 18 to 200 it's 
sorry 24 to 200 millimeter lens it's not the sharpest it's not the fastest but it's light it's one lens it's versatile and having that piece of equipment means that there's more opportunities to be had because let's face it when you're knackered and you're walking up a hill and you see a shot and you haven't got the right lens on last thing you're going to be doing is uh, changing lenses so uh, make sure your kit is light is my answer and versatile because kit does matter that's better we're on a bit flatter now uh, so the next one I think that's really important is don't be afraid to use auto um, preferably you don't want to be using auto but preferably you don't want to be missing your shot either so if you're in a nip and you need to get that shot whip it in auto because um, fiddling around with your settings is just no good when you need to get the shot save landing your camera for when you're not in a rush and that said it brings you on to manual mode really important that you understand what manual is aperture and shutter priority and it's really simple uh, manual for more time that's how I remember it aperture for moving about doesn't make sense but that's what it's for um, that's how I use it anyway and shutter speed for speedy objects um, yeah so auto mode will almost always get what you want wrong so it is a last resort um, it's more important that you use it though if you're uh, you're in a nip but learn your manual mode and your aperture mode they're the two ones that I would suggest that you get used to uh, shutter priority speed you just whack it up um, the beauty with aperture mode is everything else is automatic if you want it to be and you just control the aperture um, and that's much better in a situation than whipping over to auto mode but there is occasions where I ain't had time to think so I've just ran into auto and it's uh, got me the shot so you're better off getting a shot that's not perfect than not at all um, I just think I've landed on private land so I'm gonna go and take cover somewhere Photography is an art, not a science, and that means it's all subjective, so therefore, if someone says you have to do it this way, that might work for them, but it might not work for you. So I found that um, I was watching YouTube videos and I was completely changing my workflow, and as a result, absolutely ruined my photography. So I would take everything that you learn on YouTube with a pinch of salt, because uh, you know anyone can post on YouTube and um, Anyone can, uh, anyone can uh, tell you how things are meant to be, but only you will know how you should do it. Because, like I said, it's, uh, it's an art, not a science, and it doesn't need an exact formula. So I might go a bit different way about things to what you will. And there's nothing wrong with that. Because even to the point where you're looking at an image, you know, you might like it, I might not. So it's just, it's just a case of um, learning the basics of your camera and then getting your camera, putting it in your hand and being out with it loads. So you need to be going out into new environments all the time and you need to have your camera on you often and that's the only true way that you're going to learn. Uh, YouTube is really good, it's really fun and there's lots of lessons to be learned and it's really very inspirational but you mustn't take it as gospel. Um, it's not something that's uh, an exact science. That's all I've got to say on that one. So. The beauty of uh, private land, when you bump into someone on private land, they think you're something to do with the private land and then they run off. Uh, so, there was a couple of lads uh, enjoying a little bit of time by the river and then they've just scarpered because they thought I was a landowner. Brilliant. So 
of going back to a previous one um so it's about being present so i've been walking for quite a bit and i'm all sweaty and i'm all wrecked up and i am definitely not in the creative flow um so what i like to do is just sort of sit for 10 15 minutes or half an hour whatever and just absorb the environment in let my body temperature cool down and uh so I just concentrate on the environment, clear my mind, stay off my phone, and um, and then if you're lucky, shots start popping out to you. So there was going to be some epic drone footage on this video, but I uh, yeah, left the batteries at home. Uh, so that's another thing that you could uh, possibly uh, interject into your uh, photography. Uh, make sure you do a kit check before you leave. Uh, speaking of kit, this is a pretty good one. Um, a blower and then something to clean your lenses and your uh, your your sensor with so on an earlier trip i never used to carry these and as a result i had a mucky let uh, i had a mucky i had a mucky uh, sensor and i tried to clean it uh, on site and scratch my uh, filter so sorry uh, sensor so i scratched my sensor on uh, on on the scene and uh, that's never a, an enjoyable experience buy smart not expensive as well they all do the same thing so there you have it there's some of the tips that i would uh, recommend um i did look through youtube just before i made this video because i thought i don't want to be uh don't want to be overlapping on a lot of the other videos that are already available and i felt that them ones are the ones for me personally that have helped me the most so in a nutshell you've got to be comfortable your kit's not got to be too heavy you've got to be able to access your kit at all times and um, your kit needs to be versatile and uh, you need to be enjoying what you're doing and them things that i've just mentioned are absolutely necessary on the level of enjoyment that you have um yeah it's a creative subject it's not a science um my opinion on this occasion is an opinion not a fact because it's not science so take it with a pinch of salt it might work for you it might not but i've just found these things uh, helpful to me as a photographer and as a result i've improved my enjoyment of the trips out because there's nothing worse than dreading going out you know if you're starting to dread going out because your kit's too heavy it's not accessible it's a pain in the ass um they're the things that make um make things a lot easier um and also if you uh if you take a photo and you go home and it's not done right that's quite upsetting so obviously the iso and the tripod and them sort of things are, are valuable and obviously yeah the auto mode don't be afraid of that um yeah absolutely fantastic i've uh, i've had a nice walk I've not got any photos but that doesn't matter because i've had a good day so i just want to say thank you very much if you like these videos do consider subscribing i'm going to uh, i'm going to frog march it now for a woodland and then i'm going to arrive at a pub and then i'm going to have a couple of beers it's been an absolute privilege and a pleasure to be with you today and i'll see you in the next video bye for now